You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There is a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is a special political podcast for Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. It's not safe for work. Uh, So once again, we are recording live from the Cornfield Resistance, where I can now sort of see you all pretty good if I'm wearing my glasses. It's the professional F with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Torn retinas are a pain in the eye socket, for sure. Yes, they are. And, And many, many thanks to everyone who kicked in for our Let's Cover DG's deductible GoFundMe, which my wife set up. And has been successful. Turns out that a, a four millimeter tear to the retina is some really expensive real estate. Yep. Uh, especially if they put you in the emergency room and run every test in the universe on you in a preventive kind of way. Now, as we mentioned last week, due to Drift Glass's medical incident, we had to skip our regular Thursday show. So this week you're getting two politics shows, and next week we'll be get back to our usual schedule of no fair remembering stuff, and then political podcast and then blah 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 we'll do all that Uh, that's all assuming that nothing else blows up right assuming nothing else blows up yeah which is not a (laughs) which is not a great bet these days last week has been a weird combination of events that were both wild and totally predictable yeah convicted felon donald trump by the way have i mentioned that he's a convicted felon he was convicted of 34 felonies by a unanimous jury the same day Drift Glass's eye decided it would be fun to rend its garments a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. So that's the wild part. And then all the usual zombies and howler monkeys went predictably ballistic in all the usual ways. Yeah. Now, I gotta say that Don Jr.'s girlfriend, as an aside, uh, she held it together because she was on the air on her podcast And Chris Hayes gave her props. You know, as they were reading them, she was reporting guilty, guilty, Mm -hmm. guilty, guilty. And not adding one word of commentary. She just reported the news until it was all 34 were done. So got to give props for professionalism on on that one. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's this endless audio of Republicans tantruming and flinging feces and collapsing onto Fox News fainting couches, declaring that this is the end of the Republic and how Democrats are going to pay. They're going to pay tenfold for this. Once the fascists return to power, once we have our power back, man, they're they're all going to pay. Explicitly. Yeah. We could run, literally, we could run 20 hours of audio of that garbage and still barely touch the surface. And I I believe we all agreed that uh, there'd be no touching the surface or scratching the surface remarks for a while until my (laughs) eyes... No, not not on the eyeballs, no. No, no. No, we're not making any uh, allusions to that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's fine. But it's just hour after hour of lunatics and grifters, Drift Glass, Mm -hmm. shrieking in outrage on behalf of Donald Trump. They're, They're... They're God made flesh. They're they're God King, who is, you know, who a convicted has all felon. the money. He has all the money. Yeah. That's so, the problem. So because we love you one and all. <laughs> yes, rather, we do. Rather than inflicting all of that on you, which you can get on other podcasts. If you want to just listen to an unending loop of Republicans losing their shit, you can find that anywhere. But let's hear from the multiply convicted felon himself about how the country should react. If a presidential candidate is merely indicted on felony charges. Folks, 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 she shouldn't be allowed to run. Okay, sure. There's virtually no doubt that FBI Director Comey and the great, great special agents of the FBI will be able to collect more than enough evidence to garner indictments against Hillary Clinton and her inner circle, despite her efforts to disparage them and to discredit them. If she were to win this election, it would create an unprecedented constitutional crisis. In that situation, we could very well have a sitting president 
under felony indictment and ultimately a criminal trial. Yeah, that would be convicted felon Donald Trump back in the before time of 2016. Talking about the butter emails bullshit that the Republican Party and the media and James Comey all conspired to exaggerate into the worst scandal since Nixon broke into the teapot dome to secretly fund the Contras. <laughs> now that's <laughs> blending a lot of things together. Although I have to say, I told Drift Class this week, I still am not over the pardoning of Casper Weinberger. Um, but of course, to the smooth, reprogrammable brains of the Republican base, that never happened. Nope. Just as Donald Trump never let any lock her up chance back in the day. Now, this is from Bess Levin in Vanity Fair. Quote, Donald Trump, facing time in prison, absurdly claims he never called for locking up Hillary Clinton. Never happened. Never, never did it. Never happened. In reality, he made calling for her imprisonment a cornerstone of his 2016 campaign. Yeah. And you might have an excuse not remembering 2016 if you were two at the time. Yeah. But if you're an adult who survived that campaign, you know <laughs> that he's lying. Well, well, let's, let's be very clear. We know he's lying. Yeah. But Republicans have had decades of practice of pretending the past never happened. Right. Remember, the Iraq war never really was their fault. They never supported George Bush. They never nope. supported the war. They never exactly. believed in this or that. It is so, absolute reprogrammable meat bags. But let's get back to Best Levin and Vanity Fair. Sure. Quote, there are many things about 2016 that lots of people have likely buried in the deepest recesses of their brains making them nearly impossible to recall. One thing we're guessing virtually no one has forgotten, Donald Trump's relentless calls to imprison Hillary Clinton, which were repeated so frequently then and for years to come that they had their own campaign chant, lock her up, which is why it's extra absurd that over the weekend the ex-president, and she doesn't say convicted felon, but by the way, he's a convicted felon. Mm-hmm never advocated for putting his then-opponent behind bars. Speaking to Fox & Friends Weekend, Trump falsely declared, I didn't say lock her up, but the people said lock her up, lock her up. Then we won. And I say, and I said pretty openly, I said, all right, come on, just relax, let's go. We've got to make our country great again, unquote. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, and he could have done it. He also said, I could have done it. I could have put I could, her in jail. I could have put her in jail. I could have done it. I could have done it. But Maybe I'll do it we, again. We need to make our country great again. And he's promising, and the, all of them are promising, to you know, lock up Democrats, that there should be a list of Democrats that we're going to go after right away. Yeah, Republican it, it just, attorney generals are going to prosecute all the Democrats. Yes. They're, they're telling you out loud, and have been telling you out loud, like you know, Hitler publishing Mein Kampf, telling mm -hmm. you out loud what they intend to do. And so if you're a member of the media and you persistently ignore this, you're the problem. Mm -hmm. You're definitely the problem. Hillary Clinton, I didn't say lock her up. I will say this. Hillary Clinton has to go to jail, okay? She has to go to jail. And speaking of Republicans lying about the past, we're introducing a fun new game the whole family can play called Spot the Orwell. Spot the Orwell. Yeah, it's uh, Spot the Orwellian bullshit being pulled off in this Quote, this specific one is from Jim Jordan's ongoing buffoonish attempt to conjure conspiracies and demons where none exist. This was at the COVID-19 show trial where Dr. Anthony Fauci volunteered to testify and really humiliated the clannish Inquisition Republicans who tried to pin something on him. Fauci did this using the completely unscrupulous and unfair methods of remembering the past and reading from date-stamped emails. The person you're about to hear from is Nicole Maliotakis, who is the representative of New York's 11th district since 2021. See if you can spot the Orwell. Dr. Fauci, um, how much have you earned from royalties from pharmaceutical companies since the pandemic began in 2021? Zero. Representative Maliotakis is lying about when the pandemic began. She didn't make a mistake or it wasn't a simple slip of the tongue because she's reading this off a script that was written down for her. She's lying and she knows she's lying. P.S. She's also the Congresswoman who disgraced liar George Santos referred to as Congresswoman Malio Stock Tips. 
because of her alleged, we're going to say alleged drift glass, insider trading of bank stocks. Fair. Speaking of correcting history, we here at the Professional Life Podcast always want to make sure our facts are right or at least plausibly defensible. In that spirit, we want to correct the record on the term toilet piranhas. The term was not coined as we reported earlier by friend of the pod, Bob Seska. The term toilet piranhas was coined by friend of the pod, Airbag Moments. Okay, so get off my back, airbag moments. Get off my back. (laughs) And, you know, $5 for dumpster fire, please. Yes. Uh, Now, I know we said we were going to skip the No Fair Remembering stuff this week and get back to it next week. But since we're here now, we're going to do a mini No Fair Remembering stuff on the topic of lying. Liar! 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 Not the act of lying itself, but the use of the word lie in the media and in our politics. Yep. Now, you young people might be too young to remember this, but once upon a time, there was a nearly absolute prohibition against calling a liar a liar in the media. Mm-hmm. And by extension, in politics, politicians did not say liar. Well. It just wasn't done. Yep. From Patrick Healy in the New York Times, September 20th, 2008 drift class we hadn't even started podcasting yet no we were getting ready to though we were getting ready yeah quote let's call a lie a lie finally as the democratic presidential nominee in 2004 john Kerry sometimes used 50 words to make a point when 25 would do and he had a knack for foot in mouth verbiage most famously when he declared i actually did vote for the 87 billion before I voted against it. But there was one word he was very careful not to utter. During the first presidential debate, when the moderator Jim Lehrer noted that Mr. Kerry had repeatedly accused President Bush, quote unquote, essentially of lying about his Iraq war strategy, Mr. Kerry instantly demurred. I've never, ever used the harshest word as you did just then. And I try not to, he said before going on to argue that Mr. Bush had not been candid and had misled voters and to assert that it is important to tell the truth to the American people. Ah, euphemisms. So 2004, so quaint, unquote. And Healy goes on to talk about how the Obama campaign went right ahead and used the so-called L word. And the article then sinks into that kind of quotidian, both siderist bullshit that the Times is famous for, and which, in and of itself, is in fact the biggest lie of all. Quote, Cable TV and the internet have contributed to a really polarized system where each side sees the other side lying almost as a matter of course, said Fred I. Greenstein, an emeritus professor of politics at Princeton, the author of Personality and Politics. Jesus Christ. As a result, civility breaks down and the euphemisms fade into outright accusations of lying, which can be refreshingly honest, in fact, since each side does truly see the other side as lying, unquote. Yeah, except one side is actually fucking lying, and the other side is lying about us lying. Uh, There's even this quote from Kerry strategist and serial loser Bob Shrum that sums up one of the big reasons probably that the Kerry campaign did so poorly and failed in the end, quote, We wanted to force a general election vote around the issues, especially domestic issues, and calling Bush a liar would have taken us off in a different direction, said Bob Shrum, Mr. Kerry's chief strategist, unquote. Now, remember, Republicans who had their own huge media echo chamber, radio, television, satellites, churches, you name it, they had it. They never gave a damn what the mainstream media said about them or thought about them. They didn't care. It was all explainable by George Soros media lies, you know, liberal media lies. But Democrats, who have no media of their own, have traditionally bent to the will of the media's army of tone police, who are always on the prowl for Democrats using shrill language to describe Republican atrocities. Anything that threatens the media, both sides do it lie. The threat to jog the audience awake and make it aware of how it's being lied to by false equivalents had to be shut down and right quick. Sure, now you can freely bandy the word lie around and liar around, but just a few years ago, it was an absolute no-no. Back when grown men and women really 
actual grown men and women would contort themselves into all kinds of bizarre linguistic shapes to avoid saying that terrible L word. You could call someone a serial fabulist, a known exaggerator, a prevaricator, even a naughty bad fibber, but never ever flat out call them a liar. Even as late as 2018, PolitiFact was bragging about the fact that they only use that terrible L word once a year. Yep. From Pointer.com, December 12, 2018, quote, why PolitiFact doesn't use the word lie except once a year. You might expect a website that fact checks American politics to use the word lie a lot. But at PolitiFact, we don't. We use the word lie once a year when we consider a year's worth of fact checking and pick one falsehood that we consider the most egregious. We call it the lie of the year, and we've named one every December since 2009. This year's lie of the year was the online smears against the Parkland students. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time, we avoid the word lie. That's because of the tricky issue of claiming to know a person's intention. Fact-checking is about precision in language, reporting what we know to be true or false as best we can tell. That can't be straightforward. That can be, excuse me, straightforward, but intention is a grayer, less certain area. How do we know that the person speaking knew it wasn't true? Unquote. Then along came Donald Trump, who broke the scales. <laughs> From the Washington Post, January 24th, 2021, quote, Trump's false or misleading claims total 30,573 over four years. He's a serial prevaricator, Lou Gal. <laughs> He's an exaggerator. Yeah. Listen to see if you hear if you hear a word missing from this article. <laughs> when the Washington Post fact checker team first started cataloging President Donald Trump's false or misleading claims, we recorded 492 suspect claims in the first 100 days of his presidency. On November 2nd alone, the day before the 2020 vote, Trump made 503 false or misleading claims as he barnstormed across the country in a desperate effort to win re-election. This astonishing jump in falsehoods is the story of Trump's tumultuous reign. By the end of his term, Trump had accumulated 30,573 untruths during his presidency, averaging about 21 erroneous claims a day. What is especially striking is how the tsunami of untruths there's that word, untruths, huh? Untruths. Kept rising the longer he served as president and became increasingly unmoored from the truth, unquote. Hilariously, the Post article does not use the word lie one time. But the media embargo was effectively broken. You yeah. could now use the word liar on the air without ending your political or media career. I, I think it might have been Lawrence O'Donnell on uh -huh. MSNBC who first busted out with you, we're just going to call him a liar. We're going to call liars liars. Yeah. But it really was, uh, you could sense the dam breaking. But the elimination of the strictures against calling someone a liar exposed another even deeper and more rigorously enforced media taboo. You can call someone a lying liar who lies all you want, but you absolutely cannot then ask why a network is, you know, paying that liar to sit in front of a network camera and lie to the audience. This week... George Conway pulled the mask right off on CNN. I have to say, I mean, look, I mean, you know, Scott's lying, and that's the problem with the Republican Party. It is continually addicted to lies. What am I, wait a minute. What, am I, what, am, I, what, what am I lying you're about? Lying. Not, you're I'm lying. Not, you're lying. You're lying, Scott. Lie. You're lying about the law. You're lying about what the jury was charged to find. They don't have to find an underlying crime. They had to find the intent to cover up an underlying crime. And the underlying crime was pretty obvious. What was the you're, crime? You ran for public office, Scott. You, you ran for public office, Scott. You know you can't take money from somebody and reimburse them to, for as a, you know, if it's a campaign I've, I've never run, you I've know never that run for damn public well. office. And you're, okay, fine. Well, you, you're close enough, you're involved in <laughs> politics to know that, okay? So that's the problem with the Republican Party is that they are suffused with lies. I don't know why this network is paying Scott to, to if, say if, those if, lies well, on, well, on okay. his morning let's, show. Let's but not go there, George, please. Couple, please. Let's not go no, there. No, no, okay. should go there. Scott, is, Scott is our I, colleague, yeah. and we're going to treat him respectfully as such. Continue. All of which brings us to the most indestructible media rule of all. And I'm sure you all know what it is. 
one that has survived every proof of its dishonesty and toxicity from the most trivial evidence to the most devastating, the biggest Orwell of them all. See if you can spot it, kids. <laughs> Quote, Trump's guilty verdict sharpens the two biggest questions of this election. Trump's conviction on 34 felony counts is a precedent-breaking outcome that has sharpened the competition between him and President Biden to define the stakes and the choices for voters in November. Two big questions could define the debate between Trump and Biden from here forward. The first is, which candidate poses the bigger threat to the future of the country? The second is, which candidate will make the lives of Americans better than they are today? Though related, the first focus is on character, temperament, and the second on substance and policy. For supporters of the incumbent president, you know, Joe Biden, the answer to both are simple and straightforward. But for every Biden supporter who believes these answers are obvious, polls suggest there are as many or more supporters of Trump who believe the opposite. The New York trial has heightened distrust of the judicial system by, in their view, unfairly targeting their champion to weaken his political standings. They blame Biden for, and then it goes yada, 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 on and on and on about what they blame mm -hmm. Biden for. Mm -hmm. That was 78-year-old Dan Balls, who was actually born and raised about three hours from here in Freeport, Illinois, and who succumbed to the both sides do it brain disease a long time ago. Yes, Dan Balls will point out the fact that Trump followers, that Republican base voters believe a farago of lies, just believe a shit ton of crazy ass lies, but he won't call them a lie and he won't call them crazy and he won't identify which side is actually factually correct or not because yeah. both sides do it, Blue Gal. Balance. He has both to sides. use this as a balanced story. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, before I read the next Beltway Media Mainstay, yes. I have to say, number one, five cents to 10 grain who yes. owns Peggy Noonan flat out. And uh, secondly, I'm embarrassed to read this. Um, this is uh, another beltway. As I said, media mainstay, the 73 year old Peggy Noonan, who you have seen over the decades, embarrassed herself repeatedly, both in print and on the telly. She's drunk here a she lot. still is in the pages of the wall street journal last week. And I'm embarrassed to read this because it is so poorly written and yeah. lazily written. And, and, and badly written. And it's hateful. And it's wrong. And it's a lie. It is. It's hateful, wrong, and a lie. But, I mean, if I was editing this for Crooks and Liars, I would have deleted 80% of it as yeah. just... She just takes phrases out of her ass and puts them on the page. Well, and asserts things that she has no evidence of at all as if they were true. It just moves on without showing any evidence of any of it. Yeah. but here, But listen to this paragraph. The tragedy is... Oh, this is called, We Are Starting to Enjoy Hatred. The tragedy is that one of two old men, neither of them great, neither of them distinguished in terms of character or intellect, who are each in his way an embarrassment, and whom two-thirds of voters do not want as presidential candidates, will be chosen. Now, she could have stopped there, sure. but she's got to get 800 words in. So she says, in this crucial historical moment in which the stakes could not be higher to lead the most powerful nation on earth. Now there are like There's four no lies. reason to have any of that in there. There are like four lies in that paragraph. Just and off there the are bat. four lies in that paragraph. Yeah, yes. False, false equivalents, etc. Anyway. Yes. Next, next paragraph. When the last when was the last time you saw anyone try to address the other side with respect and understanding and venture something like I think you're seeing it this way, but I want to explain why I see it so differently. And that way we might both understand each other and proceed with respect. Instead, we accuse each other and put each other down. And it doesn't feel merry and high spirited like political business as usual. It feels cold. She wants to go drinking. I want to go drinking now. And no one's going to let me until I finish this goddamn column. But, you know, yes. just in case peggers or one of her weird people are listening to this um what you have described in terms of respect and understanding and reaching out to the other and, and saying i see things your way let's find a common solution you have accurately described the entire obama administration right and the biden administration to date who yep. has worked his ass off to find a way to cooperate with and reach across the aisle to solve some problem some way and has always been open-handed with the right she's just fucking lying and the wall street journal doesn't care 
right? Because it's Peggy Noonan, and she's a fucking institution, and there's no way to stop her from doing any of this. So there's anyway. one very specific example: Mitch McConnell having absolute brain farts in, in front of a podium and just right. freezing, and and clearly having issues, physical health issues with his mm-hmm. brain and go and the speech center of his brain. Yes, that's not. I'm not putting him down. I have, I, there's plenty of reasons I can put Mitch McConnell down. That's not one of them. He was clearly having a health issue. And what did, what did Joe Biden say? I've spoken to him. He's a personal friend. This is something that he's going through and I know he's, he's working on it. I'm, I'm praying for him. I hope he'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's a friend. Right. You wouldn't hear those words coming out of my mouth about Mitch McConnell. No. no. <laughs> anyway. Merry and high spirit. Why can't our politics be merry and high spirited, Drift Glass? Like a drinking party from our <laughs> old days when I used to be lay at Ronald Reagan's feet and admire him. Look and at his pant leg and admire him. Limited my ties. It was yeah, fun. It was fun. Back when I was, you know, forty. Yeah. Okay. Last paragraph we're going to read of this person, so-called writer. Biden will likely fail physically in coming years. He's failing now. No, you're failing now, Peggy. He's failing now. And be replaced by a vice president who is wholly unsuited for the presidency because she is wholly unserious, who has had four years to prove herself in a baseline way and failed to meet even the modest standards by which vice presidents are judged. Racist bitch. Racist bitch. And I mean, you mean like Mike Pence spending four years yeah. under a desk sucking yeah. Donald Trump's mushroom? You mean yeah. that that level of, you mean Sparrow Agnew? Baseline, I mean, is that a baseline enough for you? Mm-hmm. No, it's, um, <sighs> it's, it's racist bullshit. It's racist, it's bad writing, and she wants to get drunk with Republicans and Democrats alike. Right. Like in the good old days. Yeah. And again, she has demonstrated none of this with facts. She just asserts yeah. them because she's Peggy Noonan and you should just believe what she says. It should be and, merry and high-spirited, Drift Glass. And she is a pillar of the Beltway community. This Absolutely. Is, this is someone who's on, who used to be anyway, back in the olden times on Meet the Press constantly. ABC's constantly, This Week constantly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And who's just a horrible, awful person. And back in the old days... <laughs> If you were Martin Luther, let's say, and you had like specific critiques of the church, Mm -hmm. you could nail them to the door of a cathedral and get a public dialogue beginning, uh, begun to discuss all of the things you're pointing out that the church is doing wrong. Now you'd be chased into exile and they try to murder you, but you could (laughs) in fact get something started, get a discussion going because clearly the institution you're critiquing is horribly corrupt. Deeply corrupt. Yes. And, yes. and you are identifying that fact, which everyone can see in front of them. We bloggers have been nailing the truth to our blogs for 20 years. And the Beltway media just willfully ignores us and willfully ignores our critiques because the truth is inconvenient to their business model. So what happens? What happens when you've spent decades polluting the political soil with this both sider's poison? What happens to politics once you've done that? You grow... Feeble-minded, jelly-spined politicians like 71-year-old Susan Collins, who, Mm. you might remember, called the cops when a handful of peaceful protesters chalked a polite abortion message on the sidewalk outside of her house. She freaked out. She called the cops and demanded they investigate these terrible people who are violating the comedy of the blah, blah, blah. This is from Michael Tomaski in The New Republic just last week. Quote, Susan Collins' really dumb Trump defense reveals the GOP's sickness. The only thing that was more fun yesterday than watching the Trump verdict come in was watching Republicans and assorted right-wingers sputter in outrage. I flipped on Fox News. You know, we do that too, Michael. Yes, we we do. We have a little uh, steeplechase where we go check out the weirdos on other channels and we're never disappointed. I flipped on Fox News not long after the verdict was announced and caught Janine Pirro. Speaking of people who love to climb into the bottle and never come out. In the middle of an unhinged rant, we have gone over a cliff in America, she howled, concluding, and in the end, with all this smoke and mirrors, at 34 counts, and a hooker, 
and a guy who, according to a federal judge, is a serial perjurer. We have convinced a former president, convicted, I'm sorry, convicted a former president of the United States of America. Yes, we have. That's why we call him a convicted felon. That's why he's mm-hmm. now convicted felon Donald Trump. Anyway, back to the article. Republicans, well, you know what they did after the verdict, especially the vice presidential supplicants. Senator Tim Scott was maybe the most extreme, but actually all of them. Marco Rubio, Tom Cotton, Elise Stefanik, J.D. Vance, and more were all over the top. That's we expected. More interesting were the elder states persons of the party who are, to a person, moral cowards, but aren't exactly card-carrying MAGA heads. Senator John Barrasso, the case in New York against President Trump has never been about justice. Democrats are weaponizing the justice system against a political opponent. Mitch McConnell, these charges should never have been brought in the first place. I expect the conviction to be overturned on appeal, like you overturn a tortoise and have its little legs flailing around in the sun. <laughs> but, the, but the dumbest of them all was Susan Collins' statement, especially this part. Quote, the district attorney who campaigned on a promise to prosecute Donald Trump brought these charges precisely because of who the defendant was rather than because of any specified criminal conduct. One has to wonder why Collins went out of her way to make this kind of statement. Maine isn't exactly MAGA land. She's probably in her last term. On a personal level, Trump probably has very little use for her, and she probably doesn't care much for him. So why? Because the cancer runs so deep now in the organs of the Republican Party that no office holder is cancer free, unquote. They're yeah. rotten to the core. They're rotten to the fucking core. All of them. All of them burn in hell. All of them. And well, there's... and I think they're all being blackmailed. I really think this this campaign director this week who told Republicans do not siphon Donald Trump's money away from him by using the conviction as a camp as a fundraiser. For yourself. Yeah. Don't be selfish. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. Donald Trump no. doesn't give a shit about down ballot Republicans. He doesn't I give am a the shit states. about the yeah, he's the state. Mm-hmm. He's gonna fire anybody who crosses him. Yep. The entire civil service is gone. This is the plan. It's been printed out in the form of, you know, the the twenty five plan, plan twenty twenty five or whatever it's called. And yeah. and it's all in writing. And like you said, our, it's like Mein Kampf. It's all in and, writing. It's, and, and to all of our Never Trump friends who come sneaking over to this podcast looking for material they can steal and claim as their <laughs> own a year or two or five from now. Yeah. Um, By the way, Hal Sparks has been complaining about that lately, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, it's clear. They they yeah. are very aware of the fact that they were very late to this party, like yep. 20 years too late. And, and there they have are sharper to... people in the shed with them that they can borrow from. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just going to take it, call it their own. And yeah. and once I am on Tim Miller's podcast, I'll bring <laughs> this point up. <clears throat> but until then, I, I did just want to say that um, your party didn't spontaneously become a shithole of biggest and imbeciles overnight you created uh, excuse me you created a gravitational field that attracted bigots and imbeciles you and your southern strategy and your powell memo and the moral majority you created effectively a honeypot that drew in all the worst people from all over the country into your political party and the only people who refused to see that that was happening were The mainstream media, who are still playing the both sides do it game, because that's how they escaped liability for that bullshit. Mm -hmm. And your your tiny, tiny number of party elite at the very top, who just pretended it wasn't happening. Who are now mostly never Trump podcasters, who are all shocked that the Republican Party was full of Republicans all along. Anyway, on that note, Blue Gal, why don't we do a news roundup? Because let's do a news roundup. The President Biden in continues. By the way, last uh, Thursday? Yep. Convicted felon Donald Trump was convicted of 34 felonies, which makes him, Donald Trump, a convicted felon. Yeah. I'll always remember that day as the day my retina blew out and (laughs) Donald Trump was found guilty of 34 felonies. Now, can Donald Trump, the convicted felon, own a gun? Well, the answer is probably not. Under both federal law and New York state law, people convicted of felonies cannot legally possess firearms. Can Donald Trump convicted felon travel internationally? Probably, but there are 37 countries which bar convicted felons, including Canada and the UK. What about all that talk from Republicans about 
Joe Biden letting convicted felons come in from Mexico. I know. You know, the Republicans aren't sending us their best blue gal. No. <clears throat> also, doesn't I wonder if Trump has properties in countries that he can no longer visit? Did you That's know, Drew Class, some of some of the Republicans that are in this country are not only convicted felons, they're adjudicated rapists. Yes. You know, well, yeah. Now, I have a question. While out on his own recognizance, um, Donald Trump, convicted felon, will have to meet with a probation officer. I want to be a fly on the wall and or a court appointed psychiatrist to assess him. You know, now, will he have to pee in a cup and pass a drug test? Time will tell. He might have to take a drug test because he's a convicted felon. Yep. This was Donald Trump convicted felon on Fox and Friends. I'm telling you, China and Russia, they're not the problem. We have a problem from within that's really bad. Really bad. Within. That'd be you and me, Blue Gal. You and me. Uh, oh. this, is, this is Donald Trump, the convicted felon, also says that he supports climate change and rising sea levels because it, quote, means basically you have a little more beachfront property, unquote. The fact that Donald Trump is now a convicted felon may have caused some people to forget that he's also, among other things, by the way, an adjudicated rapist Mm -hmm. and has been barred from doing business in New York because he's such a fucking crook. Yeah. Yep. I'm waiting for the I am not a crook. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes, you are. Uh, This is from the AP. We're going to move away from Washington for just a minute and talk about Kansas. The Kansas Constitution does not include a right to vote says Supreme Court majority, the state Supreme Court. The Kansas Supreme Court offered a mixed bag in a ruling Friday that combined several challengers, challenges to a 2021 election law, siding with state officials on one provision, reviving challenges to others, and offering the possibility that at least one will be halted before this year's general election. But it was the ballot signature verification measures majority opinion which stated that there is no right to vote enshrined in the Kansas Constitution's Bill of Rights that drew fiery dissent from three of the court's seven justices. The measure requires election officials to match the signature on advance mail ballots to a person's voter registration record. The state Supreme Court reversed a lower court's dismissal of that lawsuit, but the majority rejected the arguments from voting rights groups that the measure violates state constitutional voting rights. In fact, Justice Caleb Stiegel, writing for the majority, said that the dissenting justices wrongly accused the majority of ignoring past precedent, holding that the court has not identified, quote, a fundamental right to vote, unquote, within the state constitution. Remember Kevin McCarthy, Driftglass? I do. This was his fast exchange with CNN's Manu Raju. Raju, is it a good idea for the Republican Party to nominate a convicted felon? McCarthy. The answer is 100% yes. My Kevin is so Because money. I'm because telling money. you. Win you red. Mm-hmm. It, he has all of the strings to the algorithms, to the mailing lists, to the access to the online fundraising. He owns all of it. And now he's taken, he's got his daughter-in-law at the RNC. He's consolidated power. He has consolidated yeah. power in one person and one family, just like every other tin pot dictator. Right. And um, they've, he's got them all oh, just by the balls. By the balls. By the balls. Um, now, in response to the New York Times whining and bitching and running endless stories about his age because he refused to do an exclusive one-on-one interview with the New York Times, Joe Biden consented to do a one-on-one interview four miles away with Time magazine. A.G. Schultzberg is going to be so mad. He's going to be so mad. He's going to be, so be very mad. He's going to be mad. And that makes me happy. Um, <laughs> this is a question that was asked by one of the people at the uh, the meeting. So understanding Putin's aims, and this was mostly about foreign policy, which is a real Biden strong suit. Mm-hmm. So understanding Putin's aims, the world, the West, the U- United States, and you find yourself facing a difficult situation in Ukraine. The war is stalled every day. An average of 42 Ukrainian civilians are killed or wounded. Is Russia's proposal for to end the war in Ukraine the best Ukraine can hope for at this point? This is Biden's answer. No, it's not. And by the way, I don't know why you skip over all that's happened in the meantime. The Russian military has been decimated. You don't write about it. It's been freaking decimated, number one. Number two, NATO is considerably stronger than it was when I took office. I put it together. Not only did I reestablish the fact that it was the strongest alliance in the history of the world, I was able to expand it. 
And everybody thought, including you guys, thought I was crazy. And guess what? I did it. I did it. And we're now the strongest nation. We have the strongest alliance in all of American history, in all of history. In the meantime, what we keep skipping over is what the consequences of success of Russia in Ukraine would be. That's why I brought this along. You probably haven't read it. Most people haven't read it. Putin says this is part of reestablishing the Soviet Union. Yep. Then in it. Yeah. Then in answer to a question about the state of the U.S. politics, scaring the crap out of the rest of the world, democracies, this is Joe Biden again. I think it has a significantly diminishing impact on our ability to get things done internationally. Look, I tell you, I just, let me give you one example. After I was elected, the first G7 I attended as president was in London, in England, along the beach down there. And I sat down with the seven leaders that were there, and I was sitting where you were at this long table. I said, well, America's back. Macron looked at me and he said, for how long? For how long? And then Schultz said to me, what would you say, Mr. President, if tomorrow you pick up the London Times and found out that thousands of people stormed the British Parliament, broke down the doors, killed two bobbies to prevent the implementation, the swearing in of a prime minister, a choice of prime minister? And it made me realize just how fundamentally what he allowed to happen sitting in this room, looking at that television for three hours and didn't do a damn thing said about America and how much confidence people lost in America. There's not a, I'm going to say, be careful what I say. There's not a major international meeting I attend that before it's over, and I've attended many more than most presidents have in three and a half years, that a world leader doesn't pull me aside as I'm leaving, and say, he can't win. You can't let him win. My democracy and their democracy is at stake. My democracy is at stake. And so name me a world leader other than Orban and Putin who think that Trump should be the world leader in the United States of America, unquote. Yep. They covered a wide variety of foreign policy subjects. As Driftglass said, that's one of Biden's tremendous strengths. From North Korea to Gaza to China to Russia, Biden was clear, knowledgeable, and assertive about the record of his administration. Mm -hmm. In other news, from NPR, <laughs> publisher of 2000 Mule's election conspiracy theory film issues an apology. I'm so sorry. It was all a mistake. Quote, the conservative media company behind the book and film 2000 Mules, which alleged a widespread conspiracy by Democrats to steal the 2020 election and was embraced by former President Donald Trump, has issued an apology and said it would halt distribution of the film and remove both the film and book from its platform. In a statement posted to their website, Salem Media Group Incorporated apologized specifically to Mark Andrews, a voter from Georgia falsely depicted illegally voting alleged, you know, when, when he wasn't, in, in the movie 2000 Mules. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation cleared Andrews of wrongdoing and found he was legally dropping off ballots for members of his own family. Which I and, do all the time. Which we do all the time. Yep. Andrews filed a defamation lawsuit against Salem, as well as the team behind the movie, right-wing commentator Dinesh D'Souza and the group True the Vote. Though 2,000 Mules has been widely debunked by law enforcement officials and the media, including NPR, the film and book developed a widespread following among supporters of the false claim that the, election tw the 2020 election had been stolen. It's engraved on their brains. It is too late, I'm telling you. This yep. is me talking. Yep. I heard this news this week about, you know, them retracting it and pulling it off the shelves and they're never going to air it again. They're never going to publish it again. It doesn't matter. Well, and, and this is the this is the just get me a Ukraine investigation. Right. Biden, and right. I'll do the rest. It doesn't matter that it's true. It matters that you get it out there fast, get it right. into the Republicans reprogrammable meathead brains. Right. And then it's there forever. And it doesn't matter right. what the facts are or who's retracts what or who's it's convicted. Got of We've got video proof of people voting illegally. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's bullshit. It's Dinesh D'Souza bullshit. And yeah. he should lose all of his houses and never be able to buy a house again. Mm -hmm. And all of the money he makes should go to this Mark Andrews. Because you endangered his fucking life. And speaking, well, you know, he is yeah. a convicted felon as well. 
Although he was pardoned by who? I forget who who pardoned Dinesh D'Souza. Donald no, you Trump. don't. You don't forget oh. anything. Donald, no. <laughs> no. All right. So, according to a court filing in a related case, Salem settled the lawsuit brought by Andrews for an undisclosed significant amount. Uh-huh. That's seven figures. It better be. Mm-hmm. In the statement on its website, Salem wrote, It was never our intent that the publication of the 2000 Mules film and book would harm Mr. Andrews. We apologize for the hurt the inclusion of Mr. Andrews' image in the movie, book, and promotional materials have caused Mr. Andrews and his family. Salem said that it, quote, relied on representations made to us by Dinesh D'Souza and True the Vote, unquote. Yeah, that was your first mistake. Yeah, that thumping And it wasn't down. a mistake. You wanted no. to make money off of this. Salem is connected to Regnery. Yeah. Right-wing whorehouse. Like they got caught, they got sued, they knew they were going to lose. They paid out a bunch of money to make it go away, mm-hmm. and their lawyers wrote this profuse apology. They have to, because they yeah. had to. Yeah, and that this this is where we need to go with Fox. I, you know, Hunter Biden's getting ready to sue Fox, and I said on Twitter this week, I said, this is the one instance where I will write, finish them on a bomb. (laughs) Hell yeah. That's it. (laughs) And referring up to the top of our podcast to a certain Republican congresswoman who kept, who asserted that, you know, the pandemic began in 2021. Yeah. These are conscious lies being told by conservatives for a very specific purpose, knowing, knowing that nine times out of 10, there are no consequences. And the no consequences, because the media is full of Dan Balls's and Peggy yeah. Noonan's, who deflect and dismiss everything as a problem with both sides, and how both sides are to blame, and how both sides are awful, and isn't it how it's a shame how both sides are terrible? Why can't we get back to the civil days when I would get drunk with Ronald Reagan and pass out in a swimming pool? Right. You know. Well, this is exactly why they had Fauci on today, too. Yeah. Yep. Is to change the headlines from convicted felon Donald Trump to, you know, conservatives get Fauci. Who volunteered and it doesn't to be matter there. how many how many Democrats. I mean, the Democrats on the committee are fantastic. They are, and they, they parried are. as well as anybody could. Yeah, but nothing that they say is going to make it onto Fox. No, of course not. It never does. And Fauci volunteered to be there. Yes, he did. Volunteered to be there. And if you noticed, if you watched the video, well, God help you if you did. Uh, at least one, possibly two of the people behind him, are convicted January six insurrectionists who were brought in specifically to sit behind him and roll their eyes like mm-hmm. Sam Alito and, and make, make little mocking yeah. spaces like Sam Alito and mm-hmm. generally act like the asshole traitors that they are because it's all a show. It's all a yep. fucking yep. show. Yep. And it's a show for the worst people in the world who will watch Fox News and say, yep, we got him. Proves Fauci knew the whole time. It, and and it, it, again, before my blood pressure goes to the point where I <laughs> tear my retina a little bit more, Mm-hmm. Um, let's let's take a breath and talk about Texas, which always lowers the blood pressure. Yeah, no, it oh, doesn't. <laughs> I stand corrected. The Texas Supreme Court unanimously rejected a challenge by 20 women who sued the state over its near total abortion ban after the law endangered their lives and stopped them from getting medical care for their complicated pregnancies. Fuck Texas. Love yeah. you if you're a liberal in Texas, but your state is fucked. So, sorry well, about that. Well, and now there's another woman who was... Uh, bleeding out with no fetal heartbeat on mm-hmm. the pregnant with the pregnancy that she had, and uh, her husband is making the rounds. A young white man yep. sitting on a chair saying, "I almost lost my wife because Texas laws are fucked." And you know he's a loving husband who wants a child. Yes, and this is he what is going to have to be. It's so uncomfortable to watch because it's mm-hmm. babies, and we are wired. To want to protect babies. And that is normal. Right. That is a normal human reaction. Mm-hmm. But who are you protecting if there's no fetal heartbeat? Well, And the and- pregnancy has terminated because the fetus or the baby, whatever, you know, they're calling it their baby because they're parents and they love this child. Mm-hmm. And this child is dead. May God rest well, his soul. You know, it's, it's horrible. It's a tragedy. But because... The, you know, Pope Alito has decided that this is a Catholic, his Catholic kingdom and his 
backwards 16th century form of Catholicism where you burn witches is how this country is going to be run. Well, and, and you said we are wired to um, protect babies. Protect, protect children. Babies Value. and mom. And, and, and it's sent, there is a lot of sentimentality attached to that. Yeah. Which is normal and natural. Everybody, I love to watch, you know, YouTube shorts of babies being cute. As yeah, you know, I'll do that for an evening. <laughs> sure, but but my point being, the flip side of that is how many Republicans, including Liz Cheney, yeah, have walked around for years saying uh, Democrats murder babies, Democrats yeah. murder babies, Democrats murder babies, and yeah. and you might remember that Bill O'Reilly did not get thrown off of Fox News for getting. Uh, Dr. Tiller murdered. Tiller the baby killer. Yeah. He didn't yeah. he didn't get cast out for, for getting a, an abortion doctor murdered. Murdered. He got yeah. cast out for, for rubbing his junk in the wrong place and, and harassing a woman and at work. And costing the affiliates too much money. Right. Yes. Right. And every time every time they brought up his horrifying record, um, the answer from Roger Ailes was look at our ratings. Look at our ratings. Yeah. Look at those numbers. Yeah. But the point being Leveling a blood libel against Democrats has been going on for a very, very long time. In 73, yeah. And it's gone unchallenged, and it's gotten worse. Because it used to be, they just want to kill babies. They want to abort. Now it's, no, they kill babies outside the womb. Democrats kill live babies outside <laughs> the womb. And who says yes. that? Again, I'm, Liz fucking Cheney I'm used laughing, to say that. but it's not funny. But it is. Now, it, now it's QAnon. Now it's, yeah. you know, Democrats drink baby blood to say it stay young. It just yeah. keeps going on and on and on. And it is the blood libel lie. Absolutely. And, and it starts with respectable people like Liz Cheney mm -hmm. saying it over and over again. Well, well yep. with Liz Cheney, she's number three in the party. Right. Donald Trump right. says it all the time now. So yep. this is endemic to the right. Now, I believe we're going to move on to the subject of Joseph Manchin. Is that correct, Blue Gown? Yeah. He said something. He said three words this week, Drift Glass. Oh, what were those three he words? He said, I'm an independent. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Yes, he Joe did. Manchin left the Democratic Party and registered as an independent. 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 I'm an independent. Uh, Manchin accused both the Democratic and Republican parties of prioritizing. Are you ready for this, Drift Glass? I'm ready. Both parties are prioritizing partisan extremism uh -huh. and jeopardizing our democracy. Yes. Because the extremes on both sides drift glass. It's both sides. It's so sad how the extremes on both sides are ruining this country. This is In from, other words, I like money. I like money, and I would <laughs> like more money. Send more money to me. I'm in West Virginia. So, you know, just shovel that coal money my way. Right. This is from Bloomberg News. Quote, rushing back to Trump. Verdict be damned. A growing number of financial elites are throwing their weight behind Trump, who is found guilty in the first criminal trial of a former U.S. president, unquote. And what's a big reason behind that? Money. Because mm -hmm. Trump has promised to cut their taxes and eliminate regulations. And Joe Biden wants to do the opposite. And that's yeah. why these uh, reborn German industrialists from 1930 are back in the fascists because it puts money in their pocket and gets regulators off their back. And if a few million people have to die in the process, well, that's just unfortunate. But that's just the way things are in the Republican Party. Biden gave Ukraine permission to strike inside Russia with U.S. made weapons. The approval, a significant reversal for Biden, is intended for Ukraine to strike military targets in Russia that are being used to attack Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. Now, we've talked about reprogrammable meat bags on the show <laughs> many, many times. Yes. And just before we sat down to record this, a jewel of an example dropped into our laps and was sent along to us on Twitter by uh, by friends of ours. There is a new post-verdict YouGov poll. In this post-verdict YouGov poll, 58% of Republicans say that someone who's been convicted of a felony should, in fact, be allowed to become president. So obvious. In April... That number was 17%, which is why we call them reprogrammable meat bags. Chief Justice John Roberts refused to meet with Senate Judiciary Committee to discuss the Supreme Court's ethics crisis related to Justice Samuel Alito, we call him Pope Alito, uh -huh. and Justice Clarence Thomas, who we call corrupt. Who we call a lot of things, which we'll talk about over a beer someday with you in person. Now. Everybody wants a, Bi a Biden surrogate. Why aren't there more Biden surrogates out there? 
Where are all the goddamn Biden surrogates taking it to the Republican Party? You want them? We got them. This is from WJBC, the voice of central Illinois. <laughs> Quote, a president in office is trying to make progress. A convicted felon running against him is trying to make bail. That's how Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker sized up the candidates Monday to a national cable television audience on MSNBC, which is not usually our friends, but we were delighted to see our governor there. A frequent Biden surrogate, Pritzker told host Jen, so Jen Psaki, Donald Trump is, quote, a racist, a misogynist, a homophobe, and a xenophobe, unquote, who does not represent the values of American families. Referring to Trump's supporters who have seemingly intensified their voice since the former president's hush money conviction last week, the governor said, quote, they should begin by renouncing the violence and the jailing of President Trump is calling for. You have heard a lot of his supporters calling for either the death penalty or jailing of people who do not support Donald Trump, and it is divisive. What they're doing now is taking sides with Donald Trump. That is the part that I think is un-American, unquote. Right. Right, J.B. Pritzker. You go on and be that Biden surrogate. We appreciate and, it. And about Biden, you know, he couldn't be more proud. Uh, he couldn't be more proud of Joe Biden and his uh, reinforcement of American values. You know, mm -hmm. each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is a sweet little pup named Lilac. Oh, Lilac came to live with their human during the covid pandemic and is a goofy toy Ousy, who is always bringing joy to the day. Goofy dogs are the best dogs. And Lilac is brought to us by our fake sponsor, Freshly Poured Pet Food. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your pet will sit on the kitchen floor, make a goofy face, and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. And you can visit Lilac, tongue out, eyes bugging, being goofy <laughs> at our Facebook page and website. Lilac is a really sweet dog. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. It is fine to send a silly picture of your pet. It does not have to be an elegant pose. No. We love silly pet pictures. We do. Absolutely. We do. Uh, feel free to write to us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service, go Postal Unions, letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. I want to take a moment to thank Vicki. Vicki is a woman in who is local to us. Yes. Who um, gave me the knitting mother load yesterday. Yeah. And... Uh, stuff um mostly equipment needles and yarn uh winding equipment and so forth a couple things that i don't have that what? i did not own before yesterday what yeah and i am very very grateful a, a family member of hers had was absolute hardcore knitter and uh stacks of patterns and and i went through a lot of it last night and there's just good stuff in there so i want to thank vicky very very much for that mother load <laughs> of knitting equipment and uh, really, really appreciate it. And some of it will be going to stitch and go, which is my church's um, charity uh, sewing and craft and knitting and crochet and stuff. We make things for uh, Minio burn crisis nursery. We yep. make pet beds for the animal shelters. We make things for nursing home patients, um, bibs for nursing home patients, adult bibs that, don't have children's things on them are very popular. Right. And also um, they sew little Velcro uh, pockets that go on walkers so that they can put their phone and their, uh, you know, a pencil or, or whatever in there and still be able to have two hands on the walker, which is. Do you also do port t-shirts? Port t-shirts for cancer patients. Yep. yep. It's, yep. Uh, we take um, thrift store t-shirts and sew a snap band into them so that they can be unsnapped at the neck and so that people that have uh, are getting chemo via a port mm -hmm. can wear something that, frankly, I'm going to say it, can be barfed on. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, that, that gives them something to wear that is disposable 
uh, because we may, we'll make more. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, that is, that is something that we started this year. And, and that is uh, really been appreciated at, by cancer patients. I think patients. you also make, yeah. you also make cancer blankets, right? Blankets for cancer patients. We make blankets for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we make blankets from, you know, nine days to 99. We just, mm-hmm. whatever, you know, if you need a blanket, we have a blanket for you. So yeah. So, and we do hats for the homeless at Christmas and we do uh, at winter time and, uh, Anyway, uh, one of the things that was given to me yesterday was a sewing machine, and that is going to Stitch yeah. and Go. And yeah. they uh, keep a rack of those so that when people come in, it's all women, but when they come in to sew for um, mm-hmm. make these pouches and so forth, that they don't they don't have to bring their own sewing machine to church. Although, mm-hmm. you know, some hardcore sewers do, and they have, yeah. you know, the rolling carrying case with their name embroidered on it and everything. And that's like, you know, I know who those people are. <laughs> I have, I have dropped off things or been at yes. the church to do cleanup or repairs during stitch and go. And it's like walking into a world war two peace factory, peace work factory. Yeah, it was, it is. Isn't sewing it? Sewing machines as far as the eye can see. And just, yeah. we usually oh. have about 18 or so sewing machines set up and it is, it's, it's all women and it's, uh, you know, there are usually 50 women there on Tuesday morning. Mm-hmm. And I, when I'm, I'm not retired, I work in the morning for Kirks and Liars. So I go for lunch and pick up the blanket material that I need and bring it home and work on it. But, uh, next time I'll be dropping off a sewing machine and, uh, I'm going through this other stuff. There's some blanket binding in those boxes and there's things to give. But anyway, I just really appreciate that. And again, thank you. Thank you to everyone who donated to the, um, fundraiser for, uh, Drift Glass's medical bills. We thank raised... You the sufficient amount in 24 hours and then people kept giving. Yeah. And so uh, we're not only going to pay for drift glasses, I experience, but also for um, his colonoscopy from last year, <laughs> the, the bill is still out there for that. So ironically, uh, drift glasses, I experience was my band name in the 1980s. <laughs> so weird how things come full circle. Um, and speaking so of memory, anyway, if, if we circle, love hearing from you, be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go postal unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. And don't forget our gourmet coffee guidelines. If you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This isn't charity. This is, in fact, our job. If you can spare five bucks a month, please spare five bucks a month at patreon.com forward slash pro left pod. Please share our show. I'm going to have to come up with a different sentence like that because share our show is bad for my mouth, blue gal. But please share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, please get someone else to listen to. And thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, blue gal, the Internet Kitties don't think that WJBC is actually the voice of central Illinois. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the whining, the crying, the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2024-25. GGBG Productions. Love you, bye. Love you, bye.